Uh, let me ans uh, answer the first question that every uh, airport employee has asked. Is the first question is always, how do we like working for the Boeing company? Uh, we try and point them to the name of the airport uh, and that we, are, that we have been an integral part of King County since 1928. Uh, the, pro, uh, the airport is the third busiest airport in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we do that on a very small budget of about $15 million a year in terms of our operating budget. And we generate over $3.2 billion in positive economic impact for King County and the surrounding region. It's a very vital place. On any given day, we have between 800 and 900 uh, aircraft operations there. And we're also the nation's 25th largest uh, uh, cargo center with UPS as our uh, largest tenant for that. Uh, to put that really in perspective on the passenger side, we rank 303rd in passenger uh, uh, employments in the nation. So not a, not a big thing. Slide, please. Uh, we've, have a, we've had a long time commitment to sustainability. Uh, first of all, because we're a small unit and we're completely self-funded, we take no uh, general tax dollars whatsoever. And so we've been very, very conscious about how we uh, operate the airport. Uh, one of our early projects uh, was the rehabilitation of a 1930s terminal building. It was a classic, wonderful uh, building uh, that had been just simply uh, almost destroyed over time by uh, reuse, readapt, reuse. And we brought it back to its 1930s glory. Uh, one of the nice things, if you look at the archway in the bottom photograph on the left, uh, when we uncovered it, there was the terracotta archway and there was the original King County Airport uh, sign over the door. Uh, but part of that sustainability, uh, when we entered that uh, project, we looked at all new systems and energy efficient systems, both in terms of lighting, heating and air conditioning, as well as in the window treatments, uh, including when we uh, took the old roof uh, off and the old ceilings off, we found the original 1930 skylight. Uh, we took that out piece by piece by piece, uh, restored it, put it back, and then put an insulating glass uh, protector over it as well. So it's uh, really, truly energy efficient. One of the things uh, we did do is we put in a green roof, uh, which has been very successful for us. It was, I believe, only the second green roof. There was one in Portland before we did ours. Oh, I'm sorry, third. Uh, City Hall uh, had their green roof as well. The only debate over the green roof is should it have been a putting green or just a green roof. Uh, green roof. Uh, made it out. One of the interesting, large and small, and that's the one thing I want to talk about about sustainability, large and small, it makes no difference. Each step makes a difference in how you do your job. Uh, we began to look at how to do the uh, floor in the terminal building, and we decided to turn it into an art project, and we sat down with Paul Marioni and Ann Trotner, uh, an amazing glass artist uh, known worldwide, and they ended up uh, designing a glass terrazzo floor. The glass terrazzo floor is made out of recycled glass, uh, and it has not just a beauty and a context to the airport, which is magnificent, but we found out through the process, that something that the artist brought to us, that a standard uh, floor is about a 30, 35 year life, uh, life cycle before you have to redo it. Glass terrazzo uh, floors have a 70 year life cycle, and so it's really improved our maintenance issues uh, in, within the building itself. Slide. When do you start becoming sustainable and how? It, I, we came to the conclusion it didn't make any difference uh, where we applied the scorecard. We have a two-year project going on right now. Uh, we just closed it down for the winter season. It's our Alpha Taxiway. It's essentially a two-mile long strip of concrete. And it has to hold a 600,000-pound aircraft. It's a simple project. Uh, we decided that it was already going out for bid. All the design, all the engineering, everything been done and gone through procurement. And we decided that late stage to apply the scorecard to that project, and we came up with uh, some interesting findings. One, we could recycle more of the uh, asphalt and concrete coming off. We were originally going to rubble those in, uh, in place and use them as base. And uh, interesting, you really do have to look at concrete. The, the nature of the old concrete was not sufficient to hold modern aircraft, so we had to get rid of it, so we ended up recycling uh, 40,000 tons. Uh, interesting project, we put in new low uh, LED lighting, and we ended up with $2,000 a year, essentially $2,000 a year light saving uh, over that project. And as part of the process, airports tend to like hard surfaces, it's just the nature, aircrafts, uh, and we took a real design look at this, and we're able to remove quite a bit of hard surfaces from the airport, improving our groundwater uh, capability at the airport and our stormwater. 
green building implementation. We, uh, in 2009 uh, and 2010, we did a complete uh, air airport facility assessment and energy evaluation study. Every airport owned building, uh, including the, uh, the tower and all of our pump stations were evaluated. And all of our projects uh, were evaluated on a 5, 10, and 15 year cycle about what we do for uh, energy conservation and upgrade of the HVA systems and uh, other systems uh, within pumps, et cetera. And then we put that into our capital program. It is now leading our capital program. We identified that series of actions. And through that study then, we ended up with a new partnership uh, with City Life. Need to mention the partnership because sometimes that is a difficult partnership to maintain. We found with the runway or the taxiway project that we, the LED lighting, we had a new standard from the FAA for those LED lights. We'd already been working with City Light. They said, well, let us evaluate that. And they're the ones who told us we'd save nearly $2,000 a year. So we applied for a City Light grant. Then they came back and said, well, you don't qualify for the grant. And it was a minuscule grant. It was under $10,000. $10, you don't qualify. We said, well, why not? Well, the FAA hasn't appropriately tested the LED lighting that they've approved for all airports in the United States. So we went to the FAA and we said, what about the testing? They said, we're not here to prove an obvious. We know LED lighting from all the other testing saves energy. They meet our brightness standards and our maintenance standards for airports. We went back to City Light with the email, and City Light said, that's fine, we need to have the obvious proven to us, no grant. So anyway, hasn't hurt the relationship, but we're back to talking, at least. We're back to talking. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, one of the things that we did do uh, through our energy study is we truly took a hard look at airport buildings and what they are and what they mean to us and how we manage those buildings. And we decided very seriously about recycled building materials, but we're also recycling and rebuilding and replacing buildings on this airport with new sustainable and efficient structures. Uh, older buildings, which literally uh, had not been touched in maintenance for 20 years, uh, we, we've replaced or torn those down. This building, uh, the airport office complex, originally was built by the FAA to house their office space on the airport. It's a non, -FA it's a non aviation related building and by, uh, by standard needs to be removed. But through our evaluation, we found out that this single building alone consumed 9% of the energy budget of the airport. It is an energy hog is the only way to describe that building. Uh, old hangars also need to go, and all of these will be recycled as we move forward, forward in the next five years. Our programs are designed. This is one that is uh, most important. We have an airport sound insulation program. FAA standard absolutely requires that the sound insulation program is used for one and only one purpose, sound reduction in homes. It has no side benefit according to the FAA. We believe it did. So we wanted to go out and test what energy savings. We're going to be uh, sound insulating approximately 1,000 homes, $80 million worth of sound insulation within the community. They said no. What we did then is we took a look at 245 homes. Uh, and basically, we took a look at how many windows, how much insulation. And based upon the industry standard, what would those be saving? So getting around the FAA rule of don't do this, we decided to do it anyway. Essentially, we've saved 4.56 billion BTUs of energy uh, in our sound insulation program. And the average home is saving over $250 a year in energy savings. They're also getting the sound reduction as well. So it's an amazing program that has this very positive second benefit to it. And you should talk to the, when you talk to the people who've had their homes done, they just love the program. It's given back them their house and uh, their life in, in many, many cases. So the last thing uh, we just wanted to make sure is that when we do plan at the airport and how we structure our programs, we try and are very conscious of the strategic plan of the county. And we're in alignment with our programs, both in uh, economic growth uh, and the built environment, as well as the sustainability issues at the county. This is our touchstone. We use this as an integral part of our performance measures program every year. And, and we report on this every year through our budget process. It becomes very, very key. So thank you very much.